Today's video is being recorded off my mobile phone, so you'll have to excuse the difference in video and audio quality, but it should be good fun. Hello and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So through this video you may see me looking away from the camera quite a lot because I'm actually on a cycling track so I have to kind of watch where I'm going. And if you've been following me for a long time you know that when I do my outdoorsy videos like this, I don't bring my camera. One, it's on and off raining. Two, it can be a little slippy, very muddy and I don't want to damage the camera. But I advise that you watch this one anyway because I'm planning on making this into a three part video. This part being the only one recorded off my phone. Eh, you'll get it as it goes along. Now I'm just gonna find a nice spot to stop and explain to you the plans for today. Okay, I found a bit more of a secluded spot so I can explain this to you. So I'm actually going out today, you're joining me to search for some specific types of decor for our tank, natural decor. And we want certain types of branch, perhaps stone, rotten stumps maybe, small ones, because I don't drive. Uh, anything that's a little bit twisted, that little bit gnarly. Now I'm just gonna explain to you what's going on here. So I was kindly donated from a subscriber a gentleman in my hometown, um, a 200 litre fish tank, 200 litre aquarium, right? But we're not using it for fish. We don't do fish on this channel. We do bugs on this channel. Now, I want to scape this as the forest of pestilence. Okay, bear with me, bear with me. So this tank is being set up in my stepson's room. He is only two years old and he has a few sort of behavioural difficulties, he has a few learning difficulties. We think he is on the autistic spectrum um, and he will be checked for that down the line. He's a lovely, lovely lad um, and he's very interested in the bugs. And there are three specific types of invert that he seems to have fallen in love with. And when I say fallen in love with, I mean when I put the tank away after feeding or maintenance, he cries, right? That's how much he wants to see these animals. Now I'm not gonna reveal to you right now what those animals are but stay tuned for this three-part series coming your way to find out what they are now there's some difficulties in setting up this tank you see the forest of pestilence means i want it to look like a dying forest so it's not going to be lush and green right it's going to be a dying forest we will still use some mosses some lichens but we want to make it look a bit twisted a bit sort of dark but we also can't make it scary because it's for a two-year-old so it's going to be quite complicated looking for exactly what we need today so you might be wondering okay why have you set up a tank based on a horseman of the apocalypse um, for a two-year-old well you see when Theo was conceived uh, the pandemic hit so I made a joke to Danielle his mum that he is a horseman of the apocalypse that she is starting the apocalypse and he is pestilence linked with what was going on in the world, right? And when my daughter was conceived, there was more things going on in the world, which I don't really want to mention on here. So I nicknamed her War. So we've got two horsemen of the apocalypse, so we are not allowed two more children with, with Danielle because she's the conceiver of the horseman, right? So this was the ongoing joke. It's his tank. So I'm basing it on what I nicknamed him, not to his face, obviously. Um, but I can't make it too scary. I also know that you guys probably thought massive aquarium, I'm gonna make a lush bioactive build. But as I said, forest of pestilence doesn't work in a lush jungle or forest look. It works in a dying, decaying forest look, which is also perfect for some of the types of invert that are gonna be going in there. So now you know the story, now you know what kind of things we're looking for. You can join me today on the hunt for some of these branches. Now I've worked out that I need a few branches, at least 30 to 40 centimeters. I need a few of them to take home, but we can also search for some small bits of decor going along the bottom too. So join me today and make sure 
to stay tuned to next week's video where we are setting up the tank and then the week after that we will be actually hopefully fingers crossed having the animals arrive to go in that tank so let's go have a look around shall we there's squirrels dropping things all around so you see like here how there's a few twists a few turns that's what we're looking for in a much smaller scale this is actually where the water flows through a stream flows through here but the water level's gone down for the moment and i thought this might be a good place to look for certain types of twig i mean you see like this one here the way it curves in again if it was that bit smaller so i'm going to keep on looking everything will look a different scale to you like that stump there probably doesn't look that big on the screen that is a full-size tree trunk a uh, tree stump i cannot pull that out but we're going to walk along where the stream bank is and we're just going to keep our eyes out for any nice twists like i might be able to snap a bit off that old bit of wood there perhaps oh I'm walking into spider webs no that is proper rooted in Whew, this is going to be more difficult than i thought this type of thing when placed in an enclosure this is just a twig right when placed in it might look like a dying tree so we want to look out for lots of bits like this and it will also be really handy as a climbing section for the inverts that we'll be putting in here Let's try and find some more of these. Can you spot on the floor what I'm looking at? This one right here, again, good size, will look like a dying tree. Perfect for what we need. We got a couple more, and we also want some lichens like this. Good for the inverts we're housing, but also it still gives it that pop of color without making it look too lush now i'm not going to show you every little twig that i pick up but if i find something else interesting on route we'll have a good old look at it this is what i love as well look at all this leaf litter not ready for our isopods and things yet but give it a few more months and they start to decay just got hordes upon hordes of natural leaf litter now i wouldn't take everything from here um, dogs come down and wee on them and things and they're not all from hardwood trees but uh, I do come up this way and I go to more secluded spots like further away from the walking path um, and I collect from beneath oak trees and a few others now I do want to keep walking along this which is the whether river part or stream or whatever it's called comes through but it is starting to get a bit muddy there I don't want to end up uh, losing my shoes. <laughs> but if you ever come down to Plymouth, it's definitely worth checking out Plymbridge Woods. This here, this looks like it's been a chopped down or fallen oak tree. You can tell it's oak by the shape of the leaves there. Or at least I think it is. I'm starting to doubt myself now. No, it is oak. It says, there's the rest of the oak tree there living. So I think I'm going to snap a few branches off of this so we can keep some of the dead leaves on there too. And hopefully they don't fall off in my bag and we can set them up in the tank. So far, bag number one is actually pretty full. Um, I say that, the branches have kind of spread out in the bag and the leaves are kind of sitting on top from those new branches we just pulled and it's taking up more space than how it's actually filled, if that makes any sense to you. A lot of air space. So we can cram a little bit more in this bag and I have one more as well with me. I haven't found anything of a particularly good size. I feel that a lot of these dead looking trees and things might end up coming across quite low down, a little bit small. So we're gonna have to come up with some ideas behind that. I don't think I've got enough bag space to um, to get in really large bits, but you know, we could just raise the soil level a little bit higher in the tank when we prop them in. And there is a main feature in this tank as well um, to have some of this stuff around. 
Now I do need to collect a little bit more moss, doesn't matter if it's dying moss or whether it's a live moss because of the look we're going for. So we're gonna have a little bit more of a scout out and uh, get back to you guys if I find anything interesting. Before we continue this video, did you know that Bugrounds is affiliated with the Spider Shop? So when you next need a stunning new tarantula, some healthy live food, well needed equipment, or just in the market for something unusual, please head over to the Spider Shop via my personal and unique link in the description below. This won't cost you anything extra, but it gives me a little back in return for your loyalty. Thanks guys, now back to the video. This is handy. This moss is growing off a stone and you can simply manoeuvre it away like so and you can plant that back into your one at home. So I'm going to take some scraps off of this one and I don't need a huge amount of moss so this works pretty well. Now bearing in mind I do have other bits at home as well. Um, I have done another collection without filming so with the combined efforts of the two I think this tank might turn out better than I had hoped. Just spotted this little caterpillar on some moss on a wall. I was doing a groovy little dance. Unfortunately it stopped, here we go. I just walked through a massive web, or weaver web. So I potentially got one on me somewhere. I completely didn't see it, but it was a big web. It fully hit my face, it hit my shoulder. It was a big old web and it was, uh, I think from here down here or somewhere under here anyway this is an old ruined part used to be some sort of house I assume so what I like about Plimbridge Woods there's a few ruined buildings oh pretty cool just notice down here just here some dead ferns Dying ferns, they have that kind of, uh, that look that lasts a little while. Eventually they will fall off. Um, but they will hold that look for a little bit. But that's actually on my route back. So may or may not pick them, unsure yet. But uh, going to be heading back that way shortly. This video may only have been a few minutes long for you. But I've been scouting out for well over an hour now. Um, and there is something else I wanted to ask you guys that seems like a bit of an odd question. Let's get the nice tree stump I've got to go under in the background. Um, what's your opinion on slugs? Slugs. Believe it or not, lately I've taken an interest in uh, native wildlife and even native slugs. I've only just started doing research on them, but I'm thinking come autumn, leading on to maybe winter, Perhaps we will collect a few in the wild, try and ID them ourselves, learn about them, set them free a little bit later on. If that's something you're interested in, comment me below, because it might just be me on my own being a weirdo liking slugs. This is what I've been searching for. The vines that wrap around, I believe this to be ivy vines, look at that. Look at that. Now untangling these can be tricky, yeah it is ivy, look you can see there. I've accidentally pulled that one off. But getting some of these natural vines in, if I can get it away from being twisted around this stump, would be perfect. Unfortunately I have to put the camera down, or my phone down to, to do that. Let's see what I manage. I did it. I'll have to break it up to fit it in a bag. Look at that gnarly right perfect perfect so we can start coming to an end of our travels here see a lot of people make their own vines buy their own vines if you just find a spot with a lot of ivy eventually you will come across uh dead rooting vines like that or climbing vines i'm not, I'm not quite sure how it works with ivy but the way they, they wrap around perfect so I snap this up, put it in a bag. I haven't got much further to go, and then we're turning back. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of fun today. Okay, so it's just starting to rain. 
um, and I've come to the end of where my track was. Literally about five metres in front of me was the end of the track I was doing today. And we hit a gnarly paradise. Look at it all. Fallen tree, loads of twisted dead branches. So I'm gonna fill up the rest of my bag with some of these and then we're gonna head back. Look at it. Look at it all. More of that twisted ivy. Perfect. So we're coming to the end of this video. We've got two bags full. Duck under that branch. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. Remember, as I said before, my videos are every Sunday. Next Sunday, you'll see me setting up this tank. And then the Sunday after, we'll see what Theo's favorite animals are. With a slight twist on that too. Oh, there's another old building there. Pretty cool, right? So, what I'll do when I get back is I'll give these a, a good rinse off and all the smaller bits I will freeze. I prefer freezing um, over baking because baking and boiling can take out some of the natural goodness in the bark that we actually need. But I'm really, I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited now because I'm two bags full, found the gnarly stuff, found the twisted stuff, plus all the bits I've got at home, plus we found the moss, like, it couldn't really have gone that much better. And there's also a few really nice bits I picked up right at the end there that you haven't seen yet. So uh, make sure to stay tuned for that. So I've got to get out of here now, guys. And uh, I'm going back onto the cycle track. So I need to keep my eyes peeled. But thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to comment me below about the slugs. And... Uh, yeah, let me know if you're excited for the next episode, The Forest of Pestilence. Thanks for watching, take care, bye bye.